not music. <laughs> He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minute! Greetings citizens of Gotham and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns the minute-by-minute minute show with the analytical precision of a lawn dart. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. Oh, I am the other host, Niall McGowan. Yes, and we have two very, very special guests joining us for the first time. I am one of your guests, Liz Whitaker. I am the other guest, Alison Grimm, and I one day hope to possess even one iota of the big dick energy that Danny DeVito exudes in this scene. <laughs> 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 I don't know what more we can say. Let's just wrap That's up. That's it. All right. <laughs> oh, great. That, that was perfection. Returns. Thanks for having us on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is an excellent way of putting it. Uh, I've not heard anyone else say that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it you're, you are a fan of this penguin then, I, straight off the bat? I am. He also makes me feel really good about myself because isn't the character supposed to be like 30? It's 33, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, exactly. I'm gonna be 33. Yeah, he's like exactly my age too. I look great. <laughs> I'm so yeah. happy. Yeah, I'm about to turn that age. And yeah, me too. Um, I thought all my life, oh, he's meant to be, I don't know, like 60 or something. Yeah. <laughs> See, now I feel, I feel the opposite way though, because I'm like, oh, he's only 33 and he's almost the mayor. It's like, I'm nowhere near <laughs> close to being a mayor. Like, <laughs> Oh, but we live in the social media age. I don't want to be the mayor. I definitely do not want to be the mayor. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they'd go through all your old tweets and oh, everything. Yeah, but they'd listen no. to the show. They'd listen to this. Oh, I would I would never get to be mayor because someone yeah. would listen to my show. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I've been in my current position at work for almost two years now, and I'm just at the stage where I'm getting comfortable with adding specific people on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's always a worrying time, I think. You, you've got to sort of uh, leave it a few weeks before you revert back to your normal personality. Oh, th I think <laughs> they know me at this point. <laughs> also, I want to give oh, it, yeah. I want to give a shout out to my work buddy, Jesse, who listens to all of my podcast recordings. <laughs> hey, so, hello. That's a great work friend. Way to be, Jesse. Yeah. So he's very excited about our upcoming Jeopardy project. He asks me at least two or three times a week when we're going to get started. See, she's a professional getting the plugs in early. That's right. <laughs> yes, this is minute 79, and the minute starts with teetering ice, and it ends with some fun boot play. Yeah, Kinky Boots coming up. Kinky Boots. That, I just watched that movie recently. I thought it was a musical. It turns out the musical's a different thing. Oh, yes. Well, it's the oh. same story. I mm. thought the whole thing was a musical. Oh. That's right. Isn't someone... The Someone like really famous is involved in the music. It's like Cindy Lauper to do with the musical as well. Yeah, she did the music. Yeah, mm. that and that's what I was looking forward to. But it wasn't in the movie. It was a good movie though. <laughs> I just uh, saw it during the week an interview with Cindy Lauper where she was talking about how like they're like we understand that you were a real pain in the ass during like the recording of We Are the World, and she's just trying to be really polite about it. But it's like, oh no, I mean, I was pretty good. I was fine with everything there, but. I mean, the song was pretty terrible, but I, did, I didn't say anything at the time. <laughs> it is terrible. She's 100% correct. I would not have any bad words said about my Cindy. Oh, yeah. Well, well fair enough. Fair enough. But... So, yes. Anyway, we are back here with, uh, with bats climbing the ladder to the roof, only to find the ice princess on the edge of the building. This is one of those minutes where, like, you know, we've talked about a couple of times where you'll get minutes where it's literally like the next minute coming up is like just a conversation. Like nothing really happens. It's just like this progresses the plot of the movie and in, in the discussion. But then you get minutes where it's just like, this feels as if like, this is a week's worth of material in one minute. There's like so much happens in this. Lot, damn quite a few things happen. Oh yeah. Crazy things, insane things. That's but, the, first, uh, the second time in this movie we actually see Batman going up a ladder. Very slowly. Well, have you seen that suit? It doesn't have a lot of dexterity, <laughs> it looks like. It's... Yeah, and this is the improved version of the suit from last move, the last film. Mm. <laughs> this one has afforded him more mobility, and he still can't move properly. <laughs> it wasn't really until he added the nipples that the, <laughs> uh, the ergonomics exactly. of the suit That's... <laughs> really started to work. <laughs> For me, that, that is when it reaches its peak. <laughs> 
peak nipple. L- literally. It, that's the best thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All of my clothes have added nipples. Oh, now. super. And how's that working for you in life? Cool. Uh, not so well. It's, <laughs> it's getting me some very uh, unfavorable looks down the pub. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is with the, the the nipples is that like people don't realize that like it was just very cold on sets. And those are just Val Kilmer's nipples just poking out through the suit. Like, they didn't some, add those in. Those are some formidable nipples. Oh, yeah. Well, he is, I think he was He was like a nipple model for like many, many years. You know, and I think then... I've heard that about Val Kilmer. I really hope out there somewhere on, on someone's LinkedIn, it says occupation, you know, like a nipple model. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be like I was the I was the nipple in Science of the Lambs when you get that close up of Buffalo Bill like twisting his nipple piercing. I was like, no, they did the good. They, they had the, the guy actually did have a piercing, but like there wasn't it wasn't a good enough nipple, so they had to get in a specialist <laughs> and stuff. Wasn't a good enough nipple. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what a what a strange start. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ba- Batman here to uh, talk about in a minute. He um, he actually looks kind of scared here, like, which is something I enjoy about this this Batman, right? Because he on his in his mind is if she falls, I can't just swoop down and grab her. Like this Batman's a bit more realistic. Mm. As you see coming up, he needs a gadget to kind of swoop. Yeah, so it's like I had enough trouble getting up that ladder. <laughs> like I'm not going to be able to do anything if she falls. He's he's worried. I think it might just be because, like, she is for some reason stand still standing in this very pre- precarious spot. So he, he's probably just thinking, like, why is she standing like that? Something's obviously amiss. That oh, he's suspicious. hot. I'm dealing with a real idiot here. Yeah. <laughs> well, she is portrayed and described in the Batman wiki as being the stupidest person in Gotham, which is very harsh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's one of the points in that wiki. They they do say like, oh, she. One of the examples of her stupidity is that she just stands on the ledge for. Like, you know, Catwoman's not around anymore. So yeah, but we know who is around. Presumably she knows who's waiting around the corner. That's even more mm. reason to get down off the ledge. But it, it, right, let's be honest. Let's just tell everyone. You all know the penguin's there, lying in wait. Surely, though, he's threatened her and said, stand there. The floor is lava. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't. I don't know. I haven't gotten We're... to that part of the movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have to go second by second through this thing. Sometimes we do stick to that, but ah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that um, I wanted to watch Batman Returns before I did this because I hadn't seen it in a long time, but it's not streaming on anything. But then when you sent me the Google Drive to the entire movie minute by minute, I was like, I could just watch it this way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we recommend doing that. It's, it's wonderful to watch a movie minute by minute. It doesn't ruin it at all. No, no. <laughs> Liz would have no idea what that's like. <laughs> well she comes out with the line here as well she let me go i th- uh i think because i reasoned with her girl to girl yeah and i think the look on batman's face again is one of that's that's not what's going on here she's not mm. let you go it's a trap he mm. knows it ain't right but he's like well i can't i've ex- got to try and save her <laughs> i yeah, can't I'm explain batman. this to her she's not gonna get it <laughs> <laughs> she won't get any of this no yeah, but it's, it's, it's just a shame with the poor ice because it's our last minute. Spoilers for what happens to her. Our last minute with the ice princess. And it's like, no. I guess we've probably talked about this character more than any person ever has or ever will, really. <laughs> <laughs> she's become something of a favorite around these parts. Yeah, she's joining the ranks of like Knox and Bob in terms of like characters that we grew to love, but yeah. no one else cares about. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I am wearing the same thing right now. Oh, oh yeah, well, it's a good look, to be fair. That's a, it's a pretty Swiss outfit. It's like as every time you see her, she's in that exact outfit. So it's like, well, she she's clearly likes it herself. freezing. Oh, yeah, totally. Maybe, though. You suffer for fashion. No. Is she so Apart stupid from... she doesn't feel cold? Oh, I think there is something to that. Well, you've never been to Liverpool. Here, like, middle of winter, it can be snowing. And girls will go out in not much more than this and not put a coat on. Look, I, I went to Penn State. I was going to say, I went to, college. I went to college in the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the same kind of vibe oh, yeah. around those parts? I'm at the yeah, bar I'm holding my coat. Like, <laughs> What do I do with this? I'm kind of tempted now. I'm going to a, a, a drag show soon. and I'm kind of tempted to wear this outfit. <laughs> I, I haven't got an outfit sorted yet. I mean, if you can actually f- track down that outfit, John, I'll be, I'll be really, really impressed. I guarantee I could somehow put this together. I think these do. Yeah, it's a 
it's well done, but not super intricate. Yeah, yeah. I think it's doable. Well, I should actually mention as well, because one of the th- one of the few things we had on the Ice Prince is like, oh, this is the one thing we've not mentioned about her, is her outfits actually it would seem to be inspired by other DC characters, such as uh, Singrid Ninsen, the Ice Maiden. And, uh, oh, yes, the, that catchy name. Yeah, and the J- JLL character, uh, Frostbite, who's like, yeah, but they both have very similar outfits to the Ice Princess. So I was like, oh, they're both kind of, you know, the you know, singular. Obviously, that's you know, kind of a Norse name. I guess maybe they're like, oh, that's cold. And then the <laughs> Frostbite's like, yeah, so it's kind of yeah, Ice Princess. They, I don't know. That like, that's a very tenuous link. Some people have made. Of, like, I think that's inspired mm. by these characters, but no, I, I don't, don't know about think that. it is. I don't think it is. I've not heard Tim Burton say anything about well, that. I- no, I mean, no. I feel like any time a character has ice in her name, what I, what else is she going to wear? be wearing but something silver sparkly with white fur? I mean, yeah. That's... Emma Frost. Yeah. I, mm. Right. Wrong, wrong comic book empire, but right. Still the right. same concept of. It's okay. I mean, we, it's, we it's tolerate universal. Yeah. Silver glitter, white fur. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other characters in superhero things who wear different outfits off the top of my head i can't really think of anything uh, am i being stupid i mean doesn't oh. ice man wear like a variation on that too <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so because one, one ice based character showing up on like a bright orange outfit is like that's right i'm bucking the trend <laughs> uh mr freeze yeah he, he wears that prison outfit as well which we're going to get to in uh a couple of years. <laughs> Are you really going to cover that? Oh, oh totally. yeah. I can't can, wait. Can I come on and talk about that movie? I cannot wait. Oh, I love yeah. that movie so much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it, I can't wait to do it, I'm going to be honest, because there's a lot to say. <laughs> Good or bad, whatever. There's a lot of uh, discussion points. But the, but yeah, within, within this minute, though, we do get, uh, you know... Lawn dart. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the... The penguin, the penguin, like a, suddenly a wild penguin appears. And just no, that's the thing though, because this this opens up so many questions. In that, like, one question is like, so he throws his umbrella, it lands perfectly, and then it opens up somehow, and it's full of bats. And then so one question is, how the hell did he get those bats in that umbrella? That seems like that's that's a whole evening for There's some. There's a lot of like bat training questions this opens up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, um, when did he get the bats? Has he always had them? Has he had them like a week just to set up Batman? He... Actually, no, because the plan hasn't been going a week. It's only been going like. Did a he day? hang <laughs> the? Did he hang the umbrella from its, uh, like its pointy end, and the bats just cropped up there to sleep? And then when the umbrella sprung open, they were uh, rudely shaken out of bed, and that's why they flew away. But like, where where do you get that many bats? You just attract them. You, you shoot a bunch of mosquitoes up the umbrella, and the bats go up there to eat them. And then they're like, "This is a good place to sleep." It's not that dissimilar <laughs> from a bat house. <laughs> so I got all, any any excuse though with the penguin now is but my my go to is like, well, he is friends with Max Shrek, so it's kind of like it's like, oh, Max Maxie, I, I want to put a bunch of bats in the umbrella. And then like, well, a bunch of bats in the Christmas tree. And like, oh, just, don't worry about it, Ozzy. I, 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 got a, I got a bat guy. I, I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Rich people can do anything. There was once a time in the in the shop Harrods in, in London where they sold, was it tigers? No? It was actual live. Like, yeah, actual live, live tigers. I, I, you can edit this out. I'm going to look it up. Let me see. Harrods, live tiger. Yeah, they sold tigers. Yep. Uh, uh, and I think lions. Uh, 15 most expensive items ever sold at Harrods department stores. Number one, Project Mars. Price, $165 million. I don't know why it's listed in dollars Ooh. instead of pounds, but whatever. Uh, Just for, for you, Americans. Yeah, so, so that we understand. Uh, number two, Advent Calendar. An advent what? calendar. What, what was in was it? Was there tigers in the advent I don't know, calendar? It price one million. Uh, That'd be awesome though. If you open like it was a big giant, like it was like the size of a house, and you open one door and a tiger <laughs> leapt out. And like oh, the next day <laughs> a bunch of face. a bunch of bats fly out. Like oh Christ! Wait, a chimpanzee runs out and murders you. This can't be in order. These are not in order. Who does a list and doesn't put it in order? I That'd don't take two know. seconds. Yeah. 
Number three, Baldy Harrod's crystal bathtub price, $790,000. A steal. Clive Christian number one perfume price, $232,645. Oh, I'm sure it was worth every penny. A diamond like two ball putter, $161,000. Stuart Weitzman's ruby slippers, $1.6 million. Vi Spring Eco Bed. Oh, no, I've. I've clicked the link now. Whoops. It would be great, though. It's just like one of them says, like, Danny DeVito's umbrella full of bats. Of <laughs> course, they're all he dead now. It's a, bolt. <laughs> it's a bunch of dead bats in an umbrella. That, now that you clicked the link, you're going to get a bunch of, oh, you're going to get ads on, you're going to get Facebook I'm ads from for yachts now. <laughs> for tigers. And crystal bathtubs. <laughs> oh, that bathtub is interesting looking. It's really carved out of a giant crystal. It's Ooh, not like crystal cool. encrusted. It's... Yeah, out of a giant crystal. That's the kind of thing that the the uh, ice princess here. She is aspiring to that lifestyle. I oh, uh, I, can, oh yeah. I can imagine the penguin doing that after a while. Just been like, oh, when I'm the mayor, that crystal bathtubs. But he'd fill it full of fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like salt, like brine and fish. Basically, he's just. Well, that's a mental image I have now. <laughs> Danny shirt? DeVito bathing in a bath of fish and brine. Uh, well, that was the thing that, that you can, in behind-the-scenes footage, you can get, uh, I don't know if it's DeVito, but some guy in the Penguin outfit, but without the clothes on. So, and the weird thing is, they've added nipples to the Penguin bodysuit. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it was in the air already. They're like, oh, yeah, you add nipples to these suits. You never know, because it's supposed to be winter, right? You might see them poking through his shirt or something. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you become a character, you need to fully become that character. You need to believe <laughs> that you are a Penguin man. So, of course, you need nipples. <laughs> but um, but the, the thing is though, okay. So why is the penguin here doing this himself? Because this is like this is a guy high, highly publicized Oswald Cobblepot running for mayor. He's the guy. Oh, the whole oh reason God. they're up there like is this, there's this tree lighting going on down downstairs that he wanted. So why isn't he down there at the tree lighting? Been like, oh, I'm a completely innocent uh, participant. Like I had nothing to do with this. But he's up there himself with his signature umbrella, throwing that, leaving that behind as evidence as well. Yeah, <laughs> Why didn't he get yeah. like the? We we were talking just last week about the the Red Triangle Gang were dismantling the Batmobile, and the Poodle Lady was just standing there with the Poodle in arms. Like, why didn't the Poodle Lady come up to do this? Why didn't the she was holding the Poodle? Poodles can't <laughs> climb ladders. Yeah. The thing is, we know that that Poodle's pretty skilled though. The Poodle could have just ran over to the Ice Princess and started yapping at her, and then that pushed her over the oh no he needs the bats he, though oh no he, he gets the bats in the christmas tree so he could have done that right because he was framing batman so i think him being up there was part of his hubris as well like no one will ever believe you <laughs> i think he just wanted to rub it in batman's face you think after the penguin goes as well bill murray pops out and he's but he just goes on batman like, no one will ever <laughs> believe you believe this either batman he takes one of your french fries <laughs> And like Bat Bruce is back at the Batcave later going like, oh, Alfred, the Penguin did this. Like, oh, I can't believe it, sir. And then, and then you never guess what? Bill Murray showed up as well. He's like, I don't believe it, sir. No. <laughs> I really don't believe it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question here, which you might also have been wanting to ask there, now. But um, why do the bats choose to swarm all over it? Why don't they just fly off? They do swarm as like a defense tactic. I had a look. So that part kind of pans out, but... They why? Why? There's no need for them to attack her. They're not in like an enclosed space. Because she's the brightest thing up there. Ah, she's sparkling. Perhaps. She's yeah. yeah. They recognize Batman as one of their own. So they're <laughs> going to storm him. him. <laughs> or maybe they think they perceive the Ice Princess as a threat to Batman, and they're like, "Don't worry, bro. We got you. We got you covered." <laughs> Well, as we saw when we reviewed uh, Batman Ninja, now you could, Batman can persuade bats to do anything, including oh, yeah. form giant, like robotic almost creatures to do his bidding. Yeah. Oh my god, that was a crazy. That was a crazy movie. <laughs> <laughs> Batman Ninja now on Netflix. So if people want to see what the. If you oh, well, I know what episode. I'm doing later. <laughs> yeah. Same. Oh, it's 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 a legitimately pretty good movie, but it is crazy. Like absolutely insane. We had someone there who was like very, very versed in like anime and manga and stuff on reviewing us with us, Stephanie. And even she was like, I used to live in Japan. And even this is crazy to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll also say, though, because Tim Burton has peppered in various references to Vertigo throughout both mm. these movies. And this, uh, some people say this is also very similar to uh, 
the climax of that because you know in both movies like a, a man and a woman conspire against the hero by taking a captive woman to the top of a high building and then the the male villain sends the captive woman plummeting to her death where the hero watches and then yeah so it's just kind of like there is a kind of a similar sort of setup but that one they, there's other more overt references to vertigo elsewhere that we've already covered yeah I suppose that, that's weird yeah, that one's a bit more like, well, maybe. You know, no, I, I can completely see it. No, I think they're right. And I'd never thought of it because I only first, first, first watched Vertigo about two months ago. So oh. we'd already started recording half of these. <laughs> yeah, the penguin, he says as he throws the umbrella, he shouts out the amazingly ridiculous, wonderful line, Lawn Dart! Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why Lawn Darts got banned. Thanks, penguin. Well, see, this Ugh. is the thing. I didn't know they were banned until I did the research into this. I was like, I'm going to look into, you know, what happened to lawn darts? You never yeah, see them yeah. anymore. They're, they're banned. You're right, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I think, it was, I, forgot the, I think they were banned since the 70s. Well, they were banned for just years and years and years. Like, I think maybe from like the 50s onwards. And then in the 70s, there was a contention to that. So I think they were, you could have them as long as they weren't marketed as toys. And then in the in 1988, apparently, they had, uh, apparently some kid got killed by a lawn dart. And uh, so then they were instantly like, right, they're completely banned now and stuff. But just, uh, so the fact that the, pe- the penguin knows what they are, does his criminality know no ends? That he's <laughs> yeah. invoking a band's thing as well? He's like, oh, I play Rich lawn darts all the time. Anything. Yeah, and, uh, and he's referencing something relatively recent, like the death of that child. Yeah, so I, like, I just I like the idea though of like back in the day, Oswald Cobble like little Oswald Cobblepot when he was growing up in the circus was like lawn dart champion or something. He was like, really into it. That's how good. That's how he's that good at throwing the umbrella. It's like oh, this is nothing to me. That would be akin to today if like he showed up. It was like African painted dog. It was like kid tied at the zoo. But just imagine them like with a like. Like boyhood penguin, like a little bowl haircut on him Aww. and like Pugsley Adams outfit and stuff. <laughs> little shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Knee socks. Like trying to run after they like out playing football. He was never any good at football. He was never he never had the makings <laughs> of a varsity athlete. But uh now he's like the uh, lawn dart though. Up and maybe that's why he's so like that's why he turned to a life of crime. He was used to be so good at lawn darts. And they took them away. And they banned them. They took them away. In 88, oh. everything went down the sewer for him, literally. Like, he he was a big shot for a long, long time. <laughs> On the lawn dart circuit. Yeah. And then, like, 88, that happened. And he's like, oh, no. And they took it all away. And then he's like, I have to go live in the sewer now. Like some sort of <laughs> mutant penguin man or something. I will have my vengeance. <laughs> this is like an extreme version of Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Where he just sort of goes <laughs> off and lives in that, you know, with his weird family because he can't play football anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just appreciating here. People can't see this, but Allison is forwarding on pictures of people who seem to have been wounded or killed <laughs> by lawn darts. <laughs> I'm doing a Google image search for lawn dart, and it's... Very entertaining. <laughs> These are getting posted in the group. <laughs> they have to. It's uh, more, in- way more entertaining than my Google of the weirdest things you can buy at Harrods. <laughs> that was also fantastic, to be honest. Yes. I- I'm, I'm interested in that. I did look up that crystal bathtub. You- every time you say it, you say crystal bathtub. I keep thinking you're saying crystal beth tub. Crystal beth. <laughs> crystal beth. <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> The crystal beth. It's, a, it's this podcast in the shape of crystal beth's face, and you can just uh, yeah. you just listen I... to the podcast in the bath. That's the whole purpose of it. I, I s- didn't think I didn't hear that until someone else said it. <laughs> but uh, who? Oh, Ice Princess won't be seeing her no more because uh, she plummets off the off mm. the uh, poor Christy Conway, and this is the last we'd really see of her. Uh, in well, she did appear in stuff after this, but like nothing. The quite last, as... the last we ever see of her ever. <laughs> there was <laughs> the actress was just thrown. There off was her. an upturned lawn dart in that uh, Christmas present package she <laughs> lands on. Very, the she penguin falls, thinks of everything. She falls very slowly, <laughs> and Batman just kind of stands there. Like, doesn't he have some sort of like Batman grappling hook thing? Like, he just kind of lets her die. Yeah, he doesn't even, like, try and come up with something. No. You would improvise, even if it doesn't work. He just very slowly walks across the roof and just watches her fall. Doesn't even react. He's not like, oh, no, what happened? He's just standing (laughs) there staring. 
he doesn't have any kind of feelings no. on this matter. It's more like, oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Like, not even to try to clear his name or make it seem like he didn't do it. Like, he just leans right into this. <laughs> It was a real, like, Willy Wonka, like, oh, wait, stop, come back, <laughs> like, stop. Even that would have been something. <laughs> but then we do get the one of the real heroes of the movie, uh, the guy, the, the, the Johnny says what he sees, who's down there in the crowd, who's like, hey, Batman, push the princess! <laughs> Which is one of my, if I was ever, I, this is the kind of jobs I want in a movie. I don't want the... the the, the you know the the weight of having to be like the star or anything like I want one of these little parts of like I'm that I'm that one guy who's like hey it was Batman push the princess what is she proposing yeah, oh, that, yeah. that kind of guy yeah do you, do you think he like practiced that line with a bunch of different voices until he landed on just the right one oh, totally. oh you'd have to you'd have you do all different accents <laughs> different deliveries <laughs> he's actually a very uh, sort of a feet British guy this, this, this actor. But... <laughs> I did actually find uh, find out who this guy this guy is um, as well. Oh, I tried. You you've uh, one upped me. Who is he? I oh. feel like a failure. <laughs> but this guy is uh, an actor who's actually seems to be doing quite well for himself, like relatively. Uh, he's a fellow called Adam Drescher. I couldn't find out. Does not appear to be any relation to Fran Drescher. Oh, oh that was going to be my question. Thank well, you. thank uh, you for trying. I really would have loved, should have just been her in the part. They're like, "Oh, Batman pushed the princess." <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, uh, Adam Dresser has appeared in quite a few things. Uh, before this, he appeared in the fantastically titled "Wizards of the Demon Sword." Oh. What? What? Oh. That sounds what? like something from Mystery Science Theater. It does. Yeah, and apparently it features uh, Russ Tamblin, Doctor oh, Jacoby. Really? Doctor Jacoby. Swindon. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yes, I'm watching that. That's what I'm doing tomorrow <laughs> when I'm hungover. Well, thing, it, is a, it's a, it looks like a big fantasy epic, but then it's got Lawrence Tierney in it as well, like who's you know the guy from Reservoir Dogs and stuff. Mm. And like the, he just does not strike me as the type of guy who would have appreciated been in that type of movie. Like he really seems like he would have been in there. Like, oh god. Hey, if you get offered work, you take work. You can't always do your passion projects. Oh, but then um, uh, afterwards. <laughs> Uh, Adam Drescher starred in Bimbo Penitentiary. Which, what? Um, <laughs> sure, sure. That sounds yep. like a different type of movie. Mm. Uh, he actually appeared in uh, Ed Wood, so I guess he must have left a mark on Tim Burton. That he's like, oh, I get that by that, that. Oh, the Batman pushed the princess guy. I love that guy. Get him back. <laughs> he killed that line. <laughs> uh, uh, he appeared in Sketch Artist Two: Hands That See with. Um, <laughs> with <laughs> Jeff Fahey and Michael what? Keaton's ex girlfriend Courtney Cox, star of oh. Friends. Well, that's a it's, it's it's all coming together now. Yeah, everything's connected. Uh, it probably also appeared in the American remake of Men Behaving Badly. Which oh I my was god, a, I forgot that existed. Yeah, there's a version of that with Rob Schneider as the main Ooh. character. Because maybe it might mean much to you guys, but in the UK, Men Behaving Badly was like a huge, huge sitcom. Uh, it was all. It was kind of the height of, um, you know, lad culture, and it's like, oh yeah, they got a they got a fridge entirely full of lager. They do, and oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. They just drink and womanize and whatnot, and it's supposed to be hilarious. But when you watch it now, you're like, oh no, this is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Adam Dresser also appeared in Hang Time. I don't know if anyone else remembers Hang Time? Uh, Wait, the basketball thing. Yeah, the TV yeah. Show. I love that. Yes. Yeah. That the TV show, the basketball TV show, the teenagers from Indiana that played basketball. Oh, they from Indiana. Oh, is that why you know? <laughs> That's why we invited you on, really. Yeah. Just because of your vast <laughs> cultural knowledge of Indiana. <laughs> yes, all all things Indiana and basketball related. <laughs> oh, I used to love that show. Oh, me too. Even- even though over here nobody knows what's going on with basketball, that's why <laughs> like, you we, we don't that's understand why you it. don't mind it. Because when they do something that doesn't make sense, you're like you don't know. Are any of you tall enough to play basketball? Burn. Oh, very few. <laughs> very few. <laughs> when everyone's uh... short, it's okay. You still it evens out. <laughs> I'm six foot one or, or six foot uh, six with my boots on. <laughs> <laughs> your your Union Jack uh, ginger spice boots. <laughs> I wish they were that good. <laughs> oh, but let's travel back to Gotham. Um, mm. So, the, yeah, the Ice Princess, she falls splat into a prop present. Uh, well, that's the thing, though, because what she's fallen into is uh, the 
the thing to light up the Christmas tree. It's the thing she perpetually had trouble with. Yeah. Or like, yeah. okay, now I push down the lever and the tree lights up and stuff. So this is supposed to be like a bit of bitter irony that she falls on top of it and then the tree lights up. Okay, so Alanis Morissette like, oh. over there, yeah. The thing is, this is like, again, this is this the, the technical genius of the penguin and the red Perfect triangle gang? aim. Yeah, because I would have thought like, oh, this is a happy coincidence, but no, because when she, the lights go on, the bats come out of the tree. So it's like, no, he was counting on she's going to land. She must have figured out the trajectory of when, like, so we place her exactly there. If she falls, she should hit that. And then that will set off the bats, and then we can frame Batman. It's, it's got He's, be- like, doing all the... He's doing all these equations on a giant chalkboard before <laughs> to figure out like the, the velocity. And... I love that idea, but it, he can't be. It must be coincidence. <laughs> come on, come on. There's no way. Th- th- those bats are in there, designed to go off, designed to come out when the lights come on, and the lights are going to go on if the if the uh, if she hits that thing. I know. I agree. So... I. It doesn't make sense. But it, <laughs> again, like even if you know Max Shrek has a guy. Where do you get that many bats on such short notice? <laughs> I, uh, it it baffles me. I don't understand. I don't know. There's a mosquito farm. There's hundreds you, a mosquito of bats. Farm. <laughs> well, I mean, people have done this kind of thing. Not that many, but um, David Lynch. There's a famous story about him just randomly requesting from his crew, like, uh, you know, I need, uh, I need a monkey. <laughs> like for this scene, get me a monkey. Oh, for Firewalk with me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. someone had to go and just like, okay. And I think he did it with the uh, with the llama as well in the in the series. Mm-hmm. So you know, people people can do this somehow. Maybe not a, a hundred. One animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the the scale of the of the bats. It could have been though, like because Max Shrek is like also a guy with many means. Many you know, he's planned to open up a power plant, so presumably he knows some like scientific people. So he could have brought one of them out to this rooftop, and he's like, "So let's say I wanted to hit that uh, that little trigger down there to set off this. Uh, where would I have to put uh, a full like a, a six foot uh, human woman? Uh, with what a what trajectory would you have to? Land? I don't think she's. I'm six guessing feet she's tall. not six feet tall. <laughs> No. <laughs> then again, could be deceptive. I have a friend who is six feet tall, and you wouldn't think it to look at her. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the way she holds herself. You, she's basically my height, and I just think of her as being smaller. I don't know why. The so patriarchy. maybe the ice princess is huge. Well, uh, I don't know. But, uh, but, you know, those heels going to add, uh, you know, a couple of inches at least as well. So, Well, again, uh, I, I have five-inch heels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hers are probably those... bigger. They're actually when you when she's falling off, you can see they're pretty sensible heels. I'd say they're only two and a half, three inches. Yeah, they're not. I, that doesn't fit her character. I think they should be seven inch heels. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but she's going to be on her feet all day. You suffer for fashion again, you know. <gasps> again, I'm completely unfamiliar with this. Yes, concept. do not. Uh, when we were talking about girls going out to bars like this, I remember in college going out to bars. Wearing a hooded sweatshirt and jeans. <laughs> yep, same. <laughs> oh, I'm the opposite. What's going on? <laughs> We're booking the trend. We're screwing with gender here on Batman. You're out there wearing your Ice Princess costume and seven inch Spice Girl platform. <laughs> I, I, don't put it past me. I would do that. <laughs> By the way, Christy Conaway is five foot six inches. Oh. Mm-hmm. So no. let's say with the no. shoes. Probably around She's five as eight, tall as I am. <laughs> five nine, something like that, yeah. Uh, so Max Shrek comes in. Okay, so if I wanted to get a five foot six inch woman uh, <laughs> to fall off this building, that's actually one question, though, because I know, because uh, neither of you were on the first season, and we've had sort of recurring questions that go uh, throughout. So bringing up, the, evoking the ghost of Chris Walken here. Um, we had a discussion in the first season. I, I was stunned to find out that. Uh, I always regarded Jack Nicholson growing up, the, always assumed that he was regarded as like a sex icon, and like a really oh. sexy guy. And then I find out, I find out from doing the show that no, he's not regarded oh. in that way at all by no. many, many people. So we end, ended up asking pretty much every guest that came on. It's like, so do you think Jack Nicholson is a, is a sexy guy? And then this, this season, because I found out then some people also think that Chris Walken is quite sexy. So I'm just like I'm completely backwards with all this stuff. So, uh, but I put it to the both of you, Liz and Allison. 
Jack Nicholson, sexy or no? And no. Chris Walken, sexy or no? <laughs> uh, Jack Nicholson, no. Chris Walken, I don't know if I would call him sexy, but I would definitely have sex with him. <laughs> you, you know you'd have a good time. I think that's the vibe. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> mm, I'm going to take a hard pass on both of those. Oh, oh even Walken. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's too. I just, I don't think it would be a good time to have sex with him. I think he'd be very, I don't know. I feel like you he'd think be, it'd be very, all about his pleasure. Yes, I think it would be very much all about him. Oh, well, the uh, the Ice Princess, though, as you say, she falls into the light there. Splat. Uh, it's not too messy, actually. It's no, quite... a very impressive. It's a very impressive shot as well to actually get the, the the impact. You'd think they would just cut around that and be like, oh, yeah, you see the impression that she landed on it. Yeah, you don't have to show it. But I, I, I appreciate that they do because it looks real. Like, the way they do it, it's very good. Mm. It doesn't look yeah, silly, yeah. even. Mm. Um, and, at, you know, at least she went out doing what she loved, pressing the light. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, yeah, all the bats swarm out of the tree and then sort of attacking the people uh, in the streets. Again, which, uh, why? Again... Why don't they fly off? Well, it could be that maybe they're not attacking the people. Maybe they are just people just panic because it's like, oh, it's a lot of bats. Ah! Do you make good decisions when someone startles you awake with a bunch of bats? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've never been startled by bats, to be fair. I have been in a pitch black bat cave at the zoo, and that no, was horrible. I, I, I mean, I'm talking from the bats' perspective. They're being oh, startled the awake. <laughs> I'm saying they're not thinking about just flying straight away because they've just been startled out of their sleep. That's mm. true. That's true. But, They're just uh, minding their own business, sleeping in this tree, and then some lady falls out of the sky, turns the lights on real bright, and there's just real disorientation moment there. I don't blame yeah. the bats. I am team bat, to be honest. I'm on their side. I just I want the best for them. Uh, I'd also say uh, I believe the I'm you know I'm assuming that uh, the inspiration behind the whole bat swarming out of the tree and sort of attacking the crowd and whatnot would be an allusion to Frank Miller's seminal Batman Year One, where Batman uses like a little sonic device where he's kind of cornered by the cops to usher in like a cloud of bats to come, and then everyone's all in disarray, and he manages to slip out and make his escape, which they did a more overt reference to in Batman Begins, because he has that little thing in his shoe, which is like, yep, I got a little sonar device in my shoe, for whatever reason. I like that, uh, though. That works, having the sonar to control the bats. Mm. But then... Um, Although in that, I believe in year one, you do see Selina Kyle. Observe, the first time she sees Batman is in that scene. And it's in uh, Catwoman, her sister's keeper. They reiterate that scene. And that that's the, yeah, she, it's the first time Selina Kyle sees Batman in that as well. Uh, which we mentioned that that book is very, very influential over the portrayal of Catwoman in this uh, in this movie. So, yeah, it could be this little, there's little nods going on there, maybe. But, uh, of course, then the uh, the... You know, intrepid flatfoots of Gotham City burst upon the scene uh, just as the penguin is making his exit. I do love his little, like, as he's running off as well. <laughs> just such a great noise. Having individual minutes of the penguin, it's like I'm starting to pick out, like, my favorite penguin noises that he makes <laughs> and stuff. This is one of my favorites, especially because it, it confuses me. It doesn't really fit the context of the scene. He kind of sounds annoyed. <laughs> Maybe he didn't mean to press the button and start all the bats. He's like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> He's supposed to, you know, splat all over the floor, not land on that. Mm. I was like, oh, no, the bats were for another thing. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's cutting it really fine, too. The fact the police are just about to come in the door, and he's he's literally two seconds away. And he's, he's like, right behind on. them. <laughs> he's <laughs> just turned the corner. And this is the most efficient the police of Gotham have ever been. This I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if they got the the call from the penguin to come up here like forty minutes ago, and this is them just arriving now. Because like this back in the day, like in the first season, we covered the fact that like the Joker was out in the streets. A guy who's like had already appeared in TV saying, "Yes, I am. You know, buy my products. They're gonna kill you and all this sort of stuff." And had the city seized with terror. Then came out. He's like, "I'm dumping twenty million on the streets of Gotham." And then he was out in the he was out in the parade float, throwing money at people, blasting prints, and then Batman showed up. All the stuff, the bat plane crashed, and then about ten minutes after that, then the police showed up. So the fact that the police are here already is like, no, they must have had to call them like a couple of hours ago to get them up here in time. They had to climb all those stairs. 
No. Mm-hmm. Particularly with Commissioner Gordon too. It's like no way he's getting he's not zooming up those things. <laughs> like, well, maybe that's why they've been efficient because they clearly are ignoring Gordon here because they just immediately open fire on Batman <laughs> without a word to their chief who's supposed to be yes. in charge. So They're I American think they got police officer shoot first, <laughs> ask questions later. Well, that, that, I did think of that because <laughs> uh, I assumed if you're going to shoot, you probably should okay it with the chief. But recent history has shown maybe that's not the case. Uh, <laughs> but I think I think they took the call and they've just circumvented Gordon and he, he's tagged along. He's like, what, what, what's going on? Tell me, what is it? It's also the chance, too, that uh, Max Shrek, a lot of fingers and a lot of pies, he could have been like, I will, th- these officers should be on call for this. Yeah. yeah. And then he's instructed him, like, you get a, they get a little Christmas bonus, potentially. I was like, yes, as soon as you see him, shoot Batman. Because he just wants, like, I, they wanted him out of the way. Oh, wait, no, because he's got all the stuff with the Batmobile set up. So I guess they're they're hoping Batman survives this. So it can't be that Max Shrek set this up. Well, maybe maybe that's the backup plan in case this doesn't work. Or they had run up so many stairs, they were hallucinating, and they thought they saw Batman pull a weapon. Yes. Hmm. Isn't, isn't that what the old defense are? Oh, I thought they had a weapon. Mm. <laughs> That's the, the, one, uh, the one good thing about our police, I think. Uh, no, no guns. Your, po- your police don't carry guns? No, they don't carry guns. There's a special team who carry guns, but they have to be called out specifically for an event that warrants weapons. Hmm. Although that's weird to me, because like I grew up in Northern Ireland. You grew up in a war zone. Yeah, basically. And I was right. like, yeah. <laughs> to me, I used to see the police walking about the street with machine guns and stuff, because they were just like, yeah, we just have this. Just you never know. You yeah. never know. And I and I've lived in Pakistan, where people walk around with shotguns. <laughs> yeah. So to find out then later, like, oh, no, that's not like proper police protocol to just have machine guns on you at all times. No. And stuff. Like, and like a normal police car isn't usually like an armored tank. <laughs> like, oh well. <laughs> Our police have a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it and they do they don't do anything either there's like uh, well mm. i guess we could come out maybe i once rang they're, them because like someone referees. was someone was breaking into my uh apartment blog and they were reluctant to come out they were like have you gone and spoken to them i'm like no they're have kicking the door down have you spoken to them that's <laughs> the have most you, have you used your words? Words? that's <laughs> the most british thing i've ever heard have you offered them tea yet <laughs> yeah Offer them a cup of tea. It might calm them down. See if that works out. <laughs> they're, they're like referees in professional wrestling. I'm like, guys, come on. <laughs> yeah. Get back in the ring. That's my, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of wrestling is the way that how ineffective the ref is every time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like the way they'll come out, like they'll try and split up the two wrestlers who are brawling. Like, oh, no, no, don't, don't do it. No. And then no. they get knocked to the ground and they're yeah. down for about an hour. <laughs> Well, also, this will be very dated by the time this episode airs, but because uh, it happened this week, R.I.P. Mean Gene. Is like, oh, oh. R.I.P. I met him last year at an event in Philadelphia, and he immediately hit on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Normally, that would be creepy, but I, I would kind of, I'd want was, Mean Gene to hit on me. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was adorable. My husband was so happy. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, Mean Gene thinks my wife's hot. <laughs> that's, that's a great claim to fame. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so then we do get, um, you know, the police open fire. And then, of course, we get Gordon with one of his few of his, like, three lines in the whole movie of, hold your fire. Uh, not quite as, you know, classic as is, you know, hold it right there from the, the first movie. <laughs> but uh, And then Batman, yeah, and a hail of bullets, you know, goes off the edge, slides down, and then lands on his back on a little, like, balcony. And I guess the police just give up because <laughs> you think they could just go over and look we'll and see him catch there. Him. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't fall that far. It's clearly just yeah. like the next level of the building. But even then, you think like even if Gordon, was, he might shout over like "Batman, you okay?" or something like that. But it's like they're just like, "No, that's the end of that. It's it's him dead." No more Batman. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but then, uh, Batman, who did not die, that's a little. Subtle Christmas Carol reference there. Oh, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, then we get the uh, as we mentioned earlier, some kinky boots come yeah. into appearance here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll admit this is a very sexy entrance. Oh yeah, well this whole next minute is just like didn't get it so much when I was a kid, but like <laughs> the whole next minute is just like oh this is really hot. Like everything about this next bit is just like oh yeah. This I is think really sexy. as a kid I kind of got it right without knowing what it was. I think it's the first thing I found sexy, <laughs> like without knowing what that meant. 
<laughs> but yeah, but that's of course all for for next minute. So we've uh, kind of reached the end of the action. I didn't even mention the fact too, because you know, Liz, you obviously do Mean Girls minute. Of course, this movie was written by the brother of the guy who directed Mean Girls. So there's a little oh, yeah. tie in directly oh. to your movie right there. Uh, you could say there's some comparisons between the two and the fact that like both of them are kind of about like the assholes in power and the various sycophants that sort of keep them bobbing and stuff. But uh... Uh, About Christmas pageantry. I was going to say, With yep, fur, fur? fur-lined uh, Christmas outfits. I would just really love that Regina George showed up in that stovepipe top hat and stuff and the big furry penguin outfit at some point. Like, <laughs> it's a good look. So. <laughs> if anyone could pull it off, it would have been her. <laughs> does, does that mean Karen is the ice princess? Oh, oh. that makes me sad. <laughs> oh. Dumbest person in Gotham. I mean... But uh, but yeah, the, so we're nearly at, we're at the end of the action here. Um, you guys, uh, do you have any particular memories of Batman Returns? Do you have any strong feelings about the film or its portrayal of uh, you know, Catwoman as a sort of feminist icon and whatnot? All I remember is being afraid of the Penguin. This movie scared me when I was a kid. Oh, Listen, yes. like everything scared me when I was a kid. Let's be real here. Oh. But the Penguin in particular, I remember being afraid of. Looking at it now, though, are you a fan these days? Or are you just like, oh, it's just a sort of a bizarre oddity? Yeah. From... No, I'm I'm still a fan. I think yeah. Batman Returns is one of the best Batman movies. These are way yes. better than the new, I don't like uh-huh. Christian Bale Batman. They're so serious. Oh. I don't, yeah. I don't want my superhero movies to take themselves seriously. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy them and him doing them, but I prefer this. So I, I'm halfway to being with you there. <laughs> I think my favorite Batman movie is the Lego Batman movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is the opposite of taking yourself seriously. Liz, have you seen it? I have. Okay. I I know. It's shocking. I've seen a movie, right? Uh, right. <laughs> um, I love, I just like camp. I enjoy camp. Yeah. And you don't get that in those Christopher Nolan Batmans and None Batman whatsoever. Bat, Bat movies. Batmans, I will die on this hill. Okay, Batmans. Batmans. I think Batmans. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, <laughs> copy uh, editor, what I do you have to wrong. say for yourself here? I have had legitimate arguments with my husband over the pluralization of Batman. I I go with what you said though, ba- Batman's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he insists it's Batman. But he's mm. Batman. It's a name. Exactly, Batman is a name. It's a proper noun. Yeah. He says it's a description. I disagree. <laughs> oh no, it's not a description. I mean, you, when no. you say "there goes the Batman," okay, fine, that could be a description. Yeah, that mm-hmm. would. But it's Batman. He's Batman. I'm Batman. He, yeah, that's a proper name. He doesn't you say don't I'm a Batman. That. He doesn't mm-hmm. say, I am the man dressed as a bat. He says, <laughs> I'm Batman. Yeah. And that's right. It's his name. It's a moniker. It's <laughs> it's like deleted scenes from the beginning of the first movie before the sort of iconic, I'm Batman, was mm-hmm. him going out busting other crooks, but like, I am the man who dresses like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, each time he tries a different name. But yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm done for this minute. Yeah. You guys all are. <laughs> Oh, well, we will uh, we will head off into the dark, dark night. But before we do, uh, would both of you like to tell our good listeners where they can find you online if they want to get in touch or check out any, any work you're up to? Well, by the time this airs, you can binge my entire show, Mean Girls Minute. It's a mo- Movies by Minutes podcast, much like this one that covers the 2014 comedy classic Mean Girls. <laughs> And Al- Al- Allison, you want to tell them about the new one? <laughs> yeah. And after that ends, Liz and I are starting up a new project together, the podcast Potent Potables, where we will talk about Jeopardy. Oh, yeah, that's that's interesting to us because as I, did we say this on mic or off mic that we don't I really think it was on? have Jeopardy? You guys don't have. However, um, if you're interested, there's a guy on the Reddit Jeopardy community who posts episodes every day. Like he has a daily motion site and I think he pulls it from like a feed in Alabama where it airs at like 2.30 in the afternoon. So he puts up Jeopardy every day. Oh, that's insane. The amount of work. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He's a hero. (laughs) I feel weird though now because we have access to the best of Jeopardy. 
I right. feel weird. So now go- you're going to watch regular Jeopardy and you're just going to be it let sucks. down. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I've already seen it. Like, the, 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 you've seen the best. Now try the rest. It's like, <laughs> where's the draw? <laughs> Oh, no, but uh, do check those out, everyone. I only just watched Mean Girls for the first time when my partner Law was prepping to go on on your show. I'd never seen it before, ever, because it looked like it would be something I would hate. So I watched it with her, and I thought it was very good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, so I would recommend everyone, if you haven't seen it, watch it and then listen to the show. <laughs> or listen to the show and then watch it. Do it that way around. That'd be oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. See what you think of the movie after you've listened to a podcast. Oh. That sometimes talks about it. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Much like this one. We sometimes talk about Batman, and we will yeah. be back with uh, Minute 80 is the next minute. Jesus Christ. How have we got this far through now? Well, are you not uh, going to we'll do Minute, minute 79? 80. I'm so confused. This is, this is Minute 79. <laughs> no, no, they're just going to skip Minute 79. <laughs> Remember the file 78. but the, the... <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. My bad. Look. No, it's 80 next. It's 80 next. So join us again for that. We will uh, have, we've got new guests, haven't we, Niall? It's a, yeah. It's a one off this one. But uh... as the people now are going to be like, are they going to go for an hour, over an hour for every damn episode this week? Oh my, yeah, we're going to just spend five <laughs> hours podcasting today. Our, our guests are used to this crap, anyway. <laughs> uh, and, our, and our listeners, in fact. So, uh, yes, do join us again for more Bat Minute Returns. Next time. For Final Jeopardy, players, here is your clue. Amid strange mistletoe mottos shared by frenemies with hoods, this tabby will deem baddie to be face-licking good. You have two days, same bad pod, different